Hi everybody, this is Zeke. It's an honor to be here this evening, afternoon, morning, uh, depending on where you're located. I wanted to share with you uh, my experiences uh, using uh, Fedora Linux to create a private and locally based smart home hub. I'm hoping that uh, during this talk, many of you, especially those in the smart home space, will appreciate how much open source software has really become the bedrock for much of the smart home devices you see out there on the market. I'm also uh, hopeful that you will gain some insights on how to build some very cool features and applications for your very own uh, uh, smart home projects out there. And um, when you do, please do let me know. Um, I would love to hear from you on what you uh, are putting up and what you've set up. I can be reached uh, in several, several places eh? online, uh, but maybe perhaps I need to first say who I am. <laughs> Officially, I'm, I'm uh, Joseph Zixoka, but I prefer uh, Zik or some people say Z-I-K, other Z-I-K, depending on your locality. I'm an engineer with uh, Jambula Labs, um, located in East Africa. So I am truly, truly honored to be here, but uh, feel free to reach me on any of these socials, uh, Mastodon, uh, Twitter or X, uh, LinkedIn. I'm also uh, available on GitHub, so uh, you'll find some repositories, including these projects on, on, on that uh, link there. I also write uh, tutorials occasionally, how-tos, uh, specifically on Linux and open source software in general. So feel free to check out uh, my personal web page too. And anywhere I, I post, I would really appreciate you either following me, liking what I'm doing. Um, but I'm really, really honored once again to be uh, talking to you. I want to begin by just prefacing uh, why, why, um, why a smart home to begin with and why Fedora Linux and especially in a smart home in a, in, in a remote area such as where I am. Um, I think basically uh, smart homes have sort of uh, in the last uh, uh, decade have really taken off. Um, I think most people uh, look at uh, like uh, smart speakers and, and but uh, really um, the last 10 years there's been a lot of um, advancement in, in in more than just smart speakers, but in general, um, technology that is really meant to help you handle the mundane at home. So the idea is is that you don't have to necessarily get up to turn on a light, or uh, you don't have to remember whether you you close the door or whether you lock the window. Um, those are things that um, presumably the technology. Uh, is supposed to do. We were promised that and it's supposed to do that. And for the most part, um, that's what a smart home does, right? Um, the idea is that you don't have to remember each and everything. Um, um, I personally, I think uh, the m major motivation was really more trying to push open source software to to mimic or to come close to what uh, most of the dev devices that are proprietary, proprietary try to do. Um, so for 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 all the features that you get with proprietary um, software-based uh, products, I really wanted to to do something similar and even much more. Um, so the idea is is that um, if open source software could do it, then why not go that route? Um, I also really I think naturally just like to break things from very early. Uh, childhood of mine um, like most of you as a geek you you really are always fascinated um, so this was not a something that I I, I, I I was surprised I was I would end up doing um, I also learned a lot in the process so it, the, the, the learning bit is also a great motivator so I am glad I, I really 
uh, went with this project because I've really learned quite a lot about Linux in general, uh, Fedora, and, and just open source software. Um, of course, there's always the, the money uh, mo uh, motivation. Uh, who doesn't like money, right? Fedora uh, is very well suited for a project like this one. Because um, someone might ask, well, why not go with uh, uh, Build Root, uh, Yocto, all these other embedded uh, uh, software or, or, uh, OS that are, are meant really for embedded devices. But I, I uh, first of all, you have to understand we we're starting. I was starting this in, at a very uh, nascent stages of a lot of these projects. So 20, 2013, uh, most of these projects were just barely uh, beginning. Um, and, but all, also, um, Fedora uh, was also kind of like had been proven in some ways. Proven, it was easy to use. It was uh, my primary um, distribution that I was using. In fact, I've, al I've always used Fedora up to now. So, like, it wasn't um, it wasn't a no it was a no brainer for me to basically uh, go with uh, Fedora as opposed to any other distribution. Um, but 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 in terms of the smart home, uh, traditionally Fedora has been um, associated with being the the distro that that tries to be on the cutting edge so some of the latest technologies you know you remember things like uh, system d uh, pulse audio most of those began really on on uh, fedora before other distributions eventually picked up on, on those uh, technologies so in a smart home setup you really want something like that where you're trying to tap into newer um, technologies, uh, cool features, things like that, that um, that might not be available on older platforms. So Fedora offered that opportunity. Plus, of course, it, it has a very great uh, community. Um, you know, wide, really a large community, very uh, helpful folks out there. Thank you for the people who really sometimes go and recognize for doing what what uh, I consider God's work so I um, started off uh, in 2013 and I, I, I wanted to do uh, a smart hub that basically would um, would fit my environment and, and, and we're talking again uh, an African environment uh, with lots of uh, uh, infrastructure ch challenges such as uh, internet and power. Uh, so I came up with um, uh, Jambula TV, which is really a low cost uh, smart home automation and enter entertainment hub. And the idea that it would control your lighting, security, and, and uh, offer entertainment in the home. And um, and basically serve as a nerve center of sorts of, of, of the home. Um, but the idea was to keep, uh, I wanted to keep it private and really local. So the idea is is that um, I, I didn't need something to go uh, searching the internet uh, in order for it to be able to function, right? Uh, we've all had those stories where um, companies shut off their cloud services, uh, leaving users, uh, smart home users in the dark. So I really didn't want that sort of scenario. Um, but also just internet in general in this part of the world is a little bit expensive and, and quite slow. So plus also issues to do with power. So the idea was to really build a system that could really uh, withstand some of those uh, challenges. Uh, so um, yeah, I know what you're thinking. It, it looks a bit uh, clunky, but um, initially that that was the 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 box itself, uh, or what I would call the hub, and uh, really more a PC setup. Um, as you can see there, the the uh, the um, workstation that I originally was using for for this. Um, pretty humble, but um, quite did quite a bit of stuff there. Um, 
so uh, why the the name Jambula okay so this one I just included just for 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 trivia it's basically really um, Jambula is like a, a colorful summer fruit and my friends from India would know what I'm talking about um, it's a Java sometimes they call it Java plum or black plum or some people call it Jamun uh, here we call it Jambula and it's really a tropical tropical subtropical type of fruit and um, I always like to tell this little story that when we were kids um, we would always play uh, and, and, and usually the Jambula tree was always like that a magnet eh? so whenever your parents would send you somewhere you'd always branch off to, to pick some Jambula and of course when you would return they would tell you to open your mouth and usually uh, that it leaves a, like a purple color on your tongue so they would always know you had been playing and of course uh, what followed wasn't always nice but um, in terms of the smart home the architecture that um, I decided to settle on was again this idea that the hub the smart home hub would be the nerve uh, center or the the, the central uh, server in a home and everything else would sort of revolve around that so the, basically smart what a smart home hub should function like but I also wanted to have um, a hub that that basically uh, the devices could communicate to and it could also communicate to the devices and they could also communicate with each other so the idea is um, some sort of like mesh but also but also uh, uh, be able to, to, to function even without um, uh, the hub in some situations. So if you if you're looking at uh, let's say the cameras, um, you know if you could if if the hub wasn't on for whatever reason, that in fact you know the cameras would continue to function. Um, that if the uh, entertainment uh, bit was off then you know the hub would continue to function so the idea is that that uh, depend in independence of each each uh, unit in the home um, so the 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 way we we try to to connect it all together was using wireless obviously 802.11.x and then also using wired uh, wired ethernet uh, depending on the type of home um, and then of course Bluetooth connections uh, for for things like lighting, um, motion sensors. I basically try to go with um, Z-Wave, um, although uh, you can also use uh, Zigbee. Really excited about, by the way, the Mata standard, but uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, but all of that was also like it, it's nice to, 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 to be able to have also MQTT to send, uh, you know, like to publish uh, alerts and things like that. So, um, but uh, the idea is that uh, you keep it local and everything is not, um, uh, is local, everything is private, is not going into the cloud. Uh, some of the features that, um, that, um, that the hub has uh, one is the ability to be able to turn on turn off lights if a person is home or away of course if if you if someone enters the room turn turns turn turning on the lights and then when they leave the room turn off which is nice um when someone arrives being able to to announce their arrival uh being able to have them maybe play their favorite uh, music as they arrive um, typical smart home stuff that uh, uh, people like to build initially um, being able to turn off appliances let's say when you leave home or uh, you're going to bed uh, the one I like is uh, where I was able to to get uh, my jogging statistics updated every time I would return back from 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 jogging um, so that was pretty cool um, and then of course uh, maybe when the kids have returned home being able to, to alert letting you know okay the kids are back home from school or if someone actually comes in at least if you're away get an alert either using uh, uh, some type of text messaging or even a phone uh, phone call um, being able to turn on security cameras so um, 
pretty much the the standard um, smart home features um, another feature that I really like this one I, I feel is is important in a in a smart home setting is in the event of a burglary kidnapping fire or medical emergency you know being able to trigger events um, uh, depending on on uh, what is happening uh, and and being able to send that to key contacts so using whatsapp whatsapp is big in this area uh, but you could also use telegram or sms um, I, I i also set up an ability where you could actually call uh, have a an automated phone call uh, go to a key contact uh, to a doctor to the police or even the fire brigade and also have a location with directions to to your home so but um in terms of uh, an actual like let's say if there was a burglary and, and the security cameras picked up on it um there, there would be like a, 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 a siren activated so um that is also nice to, a nice thing to have so one of the things that um i really sp spent a great time doing was to really create an alerting system that uh, was really uh, I want to say very local but also very very useful and not very dependent so much on the phone you know because when you get home sometimes you put you place your phone on, on, on the couch or you uh, leave it in the bedroom so I wanted something where especially for key notifications you would always be uh, alerted so I came up with an in-house streaming uh, radio to basically alert uh, dwellers of key information. So, for example, if there's a severe weather warning, um, for example, thunderstorms in the area or rainfall, um, an alert goes off. Um, I do have on the website, I do have uh, some of those clips in case you want to hear how it sounds like. Um, birth, uh, birthdays and anniversaries, appointments, reminders, holidays, uh, being able to, to, to know, okay, so-and-so's birthday is coming up. Um, being able to know if actually you need to charge your phone battery um, or if, if your electricity meter units um, or the internet uh, data is running low. Um, Sometimes here we have power sub, uh, power power outages. Uh, it's actually f quite frequent, uh, but also sometimes when the water supply goes off, so it's nice to be alerted on uh, on uh, those uh, uh, outages. Um, the other thing that usually um, smart homes tend to do is being able to have sort of like a morning routine and a night routine so i have that also implemented so uh so you're able to then uh, wake up and have uh, your news just a summary of the news played to you your weather and just reminders of of the day you know things like uh, when garbage if today garbage, it's garbage collection day it's nice to know um and also just to give you tabs on what happened maybe in the night if there were any security incidents so but there are also these regular uh, announcements throughout the the in-house uh, radio streaming throughout the day so uh, you can set up uh, you know like breakfast lunch dinner movie announcements tv time announcements um they're also like uh when there, there's uh, significant temperature changes you know just being able to alert you um, incoming phone calls um, and then of course um, on the screen being able to have an image of, uh, of a, a camera if there's been a, a trigger in some sort of incident on, on, on one of the cameras uh, while you're watching a movie same thing with a phone call if you're watching uh, I um, in terms of entertainment we basically set up uh, Cody or I set up Cody basically to do that and uh, Cody is uh, really nice but uh, sometimes a bit clunky uh, so um, but you can you could use you could use any other any other media center um, the idea was that most of the movies and shows would would be loaded onto the hub and then um, uh, Cody would pick it up it would also uh, play uh, free to air TV so I spent a great deal of time uh, doing uh, DVB-T 
um, setups. Uh, around that time, 2013, 2015, we're going through uh, an analog to digital migration. Um, actually, most parts of the world were, were going through that. So uh, it was a very good time for me to be basically get uh, DVBT to support setup there also. So, you know, like local channels, you can basically can see that satellite channels also are available. Um, you could also stream internet TV and events, um, FM radio, online radio, uh, watch movies and store pictures collections, just like any, any media center. So that's not really so much of a big deal, but being able to do that, all that on a federal based system is really, really cool. Um, in terms of uh, entertainment, again, uh, one thing I really uh, spent a great deal of time was being able to set up like a, a music uh, server where I could uh, I could uh, stream to any part of the of the home, and so you could use your phone. You could be seated in the garden with a tablet and listen to the music that was actually coming in through the house, and it would be kind of all. Uh, synchronize so you get what you call a multi-room audio effect eh? um, you I also did a bit of uh, TV live streaming of live TV so rebroadcasts of sorts so you can think of it sort of as your own TV station at home uh, the idea was that um, you could then schedule like um, channels programs that um, uh, people could uh, stream at, uh, either on video on demand or live so um, in terms of lighting uh, the normal stuff I, I set up turning on and off at dusk and dawn um, when someone enters the room and leaves the room uh, on and off and then also uh, being able to use like uh, color color lights to be able to notify so for example being able to turn the light to red if let's say there's a severe thunderstorm you know, on the way. Uh, being able to turn the light to purple in case of a security issue. Um, uh, utilities, uh, those are also monitored uh, by the hub. So being able to have uh, selected ap appliances uh, monitored how much energy you're using. Um, being able to to be notified if you're running if you're running low on uh, meter units, uh, we have a prepaid uh, meter system, electricity meter system in this region. I uh, also wanted to be able to monitor usage, water usage, and power alerts during uh, outages. Um, being able to monitor uh, water tank levels and and also. Uh, LP gas cylinders, which is what most people use to cook in in, in this area. How how is the hub accessed? Uh, well, uh, most of the the hub can be accessed using a web bra web uh, web interface. So it, it you don't necessarily have to have internet. So you can just as long as you have a web interface, it could be your laptop phone. You can access it. Um, uh, so you can also use uh, the telephone network uh, to dial in basically and uh, follow an IVR prompt to either turn on a light or turn off a light. Maybe you forgot to 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 turn off the lights as you left as you left in the morning. You can call in and and basically turn it using the phone uh, or even the internet if you do have access. Um, be be able to turn turn the internet. So um, in terms of the hardware, um, I set up initially on a Intel uh, Celeron 1.6G. So it's not, not much. Uh, so if you're thinking, why not a Raspberry Pi? Uh, OK, that was 2013. And I, I, at the time, um, I don't even think uh, the Pi was out as yet. I need to look up that. But um, now you, know, you could actually do something like a Raspberry Pi 5. Um, most of the hardware is really like uh, USB dongles that I was using for the connectivity. So for for Z-Wave, I used the uh, an IoTech controller, uh, Wi-Fi uh, devices, and then of course DVB-T2 dongles and a 3G LTE connection. 
so for their clients um, a bunch of raspberry pies basically you know some of them as uh, for entertainment but some really more for uh, to act as sensors um, uh, smart lights motion sensors door sensors um, and of course security cameras and and and, and lots of uh, lots of uh, smart hardware that you could use I want to talk about a little bit about the 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 software itself because um, that's where really Fedora uh, comes in and um, I used quite a bit and um, I know it's a, it's a lot of moving parts but um, again I was trying to leverage at, at the time um, different uh, open source software projects to try and um, accomplish um, uh, some of the the, 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 the the tasks that might seem a bit um, easy to do now but uh, at the time were a little bit uh, challenging so um, so I had to uh, deploy basically different um, uh, software projects to really do some of the things that I wanted to do as I'll talk about shortly um, Fedora itself um, I used as the best OS for the smart home so I started off with um, with pre-releases of uh, Fedora 20 so that was around um, Fedora was re released around December 2013 but uh, I already began using the pre-releases so uh, by the time the actual uh, full release ar arrived I was already uh, on it um, we I made a decision initially to basically re recompile the Linux kernel and I, I believe uh, that deci that decision really paid off in the long term um, so the idea was that uh, I needed to be able to support um, uh, newer hardware or hardware that was not uh, accommodated for in the in the in the maintainers uh, the kernel maintainer uh, config files eh? so basically the idea was that um, if something new came up I would I would be able to simply you know recompile the kernel and and, uh, and have that that device supported uh, much of the installation was uh, automated so I used um, kickstart installs um, and, and uh, Fedora has a very great um, uh, page on, on, on uh, kickstart installation so if you're really into automated installs especially if you if you're with um, a large organization you're trying to set up Linux on several workstations I would really recommend you use a uh, kickstart I specifically used um, a project called Cobla um, I'm sure some of you recognize it but uh, it's basically DHCP PXCTF TP uh, server setups that um, that you have to have and then use uh, the kickstart uh, files to do what you need to do in terms of uh, the deployments um, also um, I made the decision very early on to to use uh, LXDE as the graphics this uh, the graphical display manager um, GNOME was a little bit heavy on resources so I figured I would use um, LXDE which is a bit uh, uh, light on resources um, I also try to customize the boot splash screen uh, to try and uh, just give it a nice uh, looking splash screen so in the in the source code you will see some of that um, I also dis disabled quite a number of uh, services that that uh, were enabled at least in Fedora 20 at that time by default so uh, whatever wasn't needed I uh, disabled I also created uh, my own uh, local uh, repository for the RPMs uh, by the way that really proved to be a daunting task as anybody who has done that knows uh, maintaining that is a bit of a nightmare so um, but luckily I, I was really most those were for just a few 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 um, packages but um, most of uh, the, like those packages were really 
uh, based or installed using a kick style file uh, uh, during installation so uh, that really helps speed things up a little bit um, in terms of uh, building the packages um, beyond the RP, uh, RPM fusion Fedora repositories um, I really I really wanted to compile most of the major uh, open source uh, packages that I was going to use uh, especially the key ones and here is why um, I wanted one to avoid uh, running into end-of-life uh, and unsupported versions kind of situations right um, I think very early on I knew this would take uh, quite some time you know of course it's been many years so I really needed to to avoid uh, that I also wanted to support uh, certain unique features that were not included by maintainers of certain packages so um, so that was really necessary that I, I compile from source but then also just to allow it to be a bit um, uh, small in terms of uh, size um, so that was um, uh, a key key decision I made very early on some of those uh, packages that um, that that were really key for this um, for this project uh, one include uh, host APD so um, host APD um, uh, some of you have seen uh, have seen uh, uh, like uh, traditionally on uh, most Linux uh, distributions you're using uh, WPA supplicant that's um, part of the host APD pa uh, host AP package and host APD is the server side and that is it is a, an implementation of, of a, a wireless uh, hotspot on, on open source systems so if you're if you're really thinking of um, building a, a wireless hotspot then I would really recommend that um, I would also recommend um, Ising, I Ichinga or I, I, I usually pronounce Ichinga but I think it's Ichinga um, or Ichinga I, I, again I guess my German friends would pronounce it better but um, the idea is is that um, and by the way it's a, it's a Nagios uh, fork um, if you're not familiar with uh, monitoring uh, software but I, I wanted to to leverage Ichinga to be able to to pick up certain um, events very quickly and alert, you know. So again, keep in mind this was uh, way before um, uh, things like Home Assistant had taken off, things like um, Domotics, you know. I think uh, Open Open Hub had already started, but I. I really wanted to use uh, Ichinga to really do uh, the, the 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 monitoring to see what was going on and then quickly alert, uh, send out alerts. And um, it's a bit overkill, but it really does the job very very well. So I'm I'm glad I chose that. Actually, even even as rec recently within um, within Home Assistant, I still use some of that. Um, uh, uh, some of that um, flow workflow uh, flow to basically do the alert the alerting um, so I would really recommend um, in case you're looking at monitoring uh, I Ching uh, next cloud next cloud which is really my favorite uh, one of my favorite um, open source uh, uh, solutions out there if you have not heard of next cloud they're really uh, really big right now in terms of um, the office productivity space um, really replacing almost like your Google 365 uh, apps and what have you so I would really recommend Nextcloud if you're really into into um, file sharing things like that uh, what we really wanted to use Nextcloud for was mainly or what I wanted to use Nextcloud for was to uh, do calendaring so being able to to monitor uh, what was coming up uh, um, you know and also just for sharing like video files uh, pictures and, and sound files uh, Nextcloud does a great job for that 
Um, Zone Minder is really more of a security for CCTV cameras. So it's a, it's a CCTV camera uh, surveillance uh, software server. So uh, you basically set up um, you basically set up like um, cameras that um, then the server controls. Uh, but it's really nice because it also has a um, mechanism to basically alert you. Again, this was way before things like Frigate that you, you're probably aware of right now. Then another a favorite of mine was a TV head and I spent quite a great deal of, of time on this specifically for the TV streaming, um, especially the DVB-T2 streaming. Um, that's what I used for the back end. Um, it also has some very cool things you can do. So really literally setting up almost like your TV channel uh, or a set of channels that you can uh, then stream out to, to devices uh, wherever they are within that uh, Wi-Fi hotspot range. Um, Cordy, which is also very familiar. I uh, just wanted to give a plug to them also. And then, of course, uh, Remind. Uh, this one might not be familiar to some of you, but it's a nice little program, open source program that um, is quite sophisticated and um, really does some very cool things. Um, so like um, I use that also for reminders, things like birthdays and what have you. So that was really a nice choice uh, to begin with. Um, of course, uh, if I were starting out today, I would probably go uh, somewhat of a different route. And um, but I, I just wanted to give a plug to you know projects like Home Assistant, Open Hub, and uh, Domotics. All of these um, are fully supported on Fedora Linux. And um, if you're not familiar with any of them, definitely look them up. They're really, especially like uh, Home Assistant, has really taken off in the last couple of years. So I love them because they're doing some really, really great things. So check them out um, on the web. I um, just wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm thinking of um, in terms of the next generation of this project. I obviously uh, time allowing and um, uh, resources. I, I'm hoping that um, I can add support for you know system boards like um, you know like ra the Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, especially starting with Raspberry Pi 5. Um, the new uh, smart home standard that uh, just got launched recently. Um, it's, um, it's supposed to pick up, so hopefully a lot of uh, devices coming out for the smart home will, will, uh, will support the Matter standard. Um, new new Newer wireless standards like uh, IEEE 802.11ax, um, Wi-Fi 6 Plus, Wi-Fi 7. I would really love to support that, um, and also a better voice assistant using uh, satellite clients. Uh, I did not uh, do much in terms of uh, voice assistance except for a little bit of um, work on like um, using. Um, using uh, the pocket sphinx um, uh, but it was pretty rudimentary uh, did the job but very rudimentary so i really uh, want to really focus on that a little bit so you have a completely open source and really uh, diy type of uh, setup um, so that's uh, pretty much my uh, talk uh, again i am hoping that um, this provides you with some insights on um, uh, some of the things you can do with uh, open source software and and just un understanding that um, a project like Fedora uh, is very, 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 very powerful when it comes to uh, setting up um, an embedded device solution uh, despite what uh, what you might read out there, um, I would really recommend uh, Fedora, uh, and also just uh, just because it's really uh, been around and really proven. Uh, so, so check out the project if you if you're still not not into into it. Um, 
the the links to the the software the the code that I used uh, are shown up there on the screen. Uh, please just check them out. Um, if if you have any comments or any contributions, please feel free to let me know. But uh, I just want to say it's truly an honor to once again uh, have been uh, here with you. And uh, I wish you the best as you continue with the summit.